In Lesson 7.5, you will apply properties of logarithms. Here are our properties of logarithms, the product property, quotient property, and power property. We can use these properties to expand and condense certain logs. In our first example, we're going to use log base 9 of 5, which is approximately 0.732, and log base 9 of 11, which is approximately 1.091, to evaluate the logarithm. In 1, our logarithm is log base 9 of 5 elevenths. Because we have the log of a quotient, we can use our quotient property and expand. We can write that log of a quotient as the difference of two logs. The log of the numerator take away the log of the denominator. So this is equal to log base 9 of 5 take away log base 9 of 11. And now I have values for those logs so I can substitute them in. Log base 9 of 5 is approximately 0.732. And log base 9 of 11 is approximately 1.091. And now all I have to do is subtract. I have more negatives than positives, so my result is going to be negative. And when I subtract, I get, let's see, 11 take away 2, 8 take away 3, and 10 take away 7. So it looks like negative 0.359 is <clears throat> the power that we raise 9 to to get 5 elevenths. Okay, in the next one, we want to write 55 in terms of 5 and 11 so that we can use either the product property, quotient property, or power property. And we can write 55 as 5 times 11, that product. So now we can use our product property and expand. We can write that log of a product as the sum of two logs. Log base 9 of 5 plus log base 9 of 11. And substitute in our values that we were given again. Log base 9 of 5 is 0.732. And log base 9 of 11 is 1.091. And when I add, I get 3, 12, 8. It looks like 1.823 is the power you raise 9 to to get 55. Okay, in problem 3, we can write 25 as 5 squared. So I'm going to write log base 9 of 25 as log base 9 of 5 squared, and I can use the power property now to expand. I that exponent on 5 can be brought out in front of the log as a factor. So I can write this as 2 times the log base 9 of 5. And now substitute in that value that we're given. So it's 2 times 0.732. And when I multiply, it looks like 4, 6, 14 with three decimal places. So 1.464 is the power you raise 9 to to get 25. Okay, on this page we're going to do some more expanding and condensing. First we're going to expand the logarithm. Log base 5 of 2x to the 6, we have the log of a product, so we want to use our product property to expand and write this as the sum of two logs. So we can write it as log base 5 of 2 plus log base 5 of x to the 6th power. But now we still have an exponent in our sum, so we want to use the power property and move that exponent on x out in front of the log. And then it's completely expanded. So log base 5 of 2 plus 6 times log base 5 of x is equivalent to log base 5 of 2x to the 6th. Okay, in problem 2 we're going to expand. We've got the log of a quotient, so we want to start by using the quotient property and write that as a difference of two logs, log base 7 of y, take away log base 7 of that denominator, 3x squared. But now we still have the log of a product, so we want to use our product property and expand some more. So we have log base 7 of y minus, and I have to be careful with subtraction 
when I expand this log of a product as the sum of two logs. So I'm going to put parentheses in. So I have log base 7 of 3 plus log base 7 of x squared. Okay, and now inside parentheses I have an exponent on x. I want to use the power property and bring that exponent out front of the log as a factor. So I'm going to have equals, let's see, log base 7 of y. And I can distribute here. Negative times a positive is going to be a negative log base 7 of 3. And a negative times a positive again is going to be a negative. And remember we're bringing that 2 out front as a factor. So log base 7 of x. And now this log is completely expanded and we removed uh, parentheses as well. Okay, in the next two examples we want to condense the logarithm, which means create one log. So we're going to use our properties in reverse here. We're going to start with the power property and tuck any factors out in front of the logs inside as exponents. So I'm going to tuck that 2 inside the first log and 5 inside the second log. So I can write this as log base 3 of 7 squared minus log base 3 of x to the fifth power. And now I have the difference of the same two logs, so I can write that as the log of a quotient using the quotient property. So I have log base 3 of 7 squared, which is 49 over x to the fifth. And now that's condensed. I've created one log from two logs. Okay, in problem two we have three logs and we're going to create one log by condensing. First we'll use the power property and tuck any factors inside as exponents. So this first term is log base 8 of x squared. There's no factor here other than 1, so this is log base 8 of 5. And we're going to tuck that 3 inside the log as an exponent. So log base 8 of y cubed. Okay, now working from left to right, we have the difference of the same two logs, so we'll write that as the log of a quotient. Log base 8 of x squared over 5 minus log base 8 of y cubed. And we have one more difference of the same two logs, so we'll write that as the log of a quotient again. So we have the log base 8 of x squared over 5 over y cubed. But now we don't leave a fraction in a fraction, so we're going to invert that denominator and multiply it to the numerator. So I've got log base 8 of x squared over 5 times 1 over y cubed. And multiplying numerators and denominators, I want to leave this log as log base 3 of x squared over 5y cubed. Again, creating one log from 3. Okay, on this page we're going to use the change of base formula to evaluate uh, logarithms. Log base C of A is equal to log base B of A over log base B of C. So we can write any log in terms of another log, the quotient of uh, that uh, log. <clears throat> and in particular, log base C of A is equal to ln of A over ln of C, and log base C of A is equal to log of A over log of C. We, we want to use the natural log and the common log um, because those are the logs that we have on our calculator, and that will allow us to evaluate um, these logs. Because it's true that I can write log base 4 of 8 as log base, say, 7 of 8 over log base 7 of 4. This is true, but that's not going to help me evaluate it because I still can't put log base 7 in my calculator. So what we want to do is either use the natural log and write this log as log ln of uh, 8 over ln of 4, and then use our calculator and type that in. So when I type in ln of 8 divided by ln of 4, I'm getting 1.5, or 3 halves. That's the power that you raise 4 to to get 8. 
And if I would have chose the common log, log base 10 of 8 divided by log base 10 of 4, and put that in my calculator, I'll get the same thing, 1.5. So it doesn't matter if we use the natural log or the common log. We'll get the same value. Let's prove that again here with log base 6 of 15. What is the power that we raise 6 to to get 15? Uh, one thing we can look at is the fact that 6 to the first power is 6, and 6 to the second power is 36. So the power that we're going to raise 6 to to get 15 is going to be somewhere between 1 and 2 will be the power that we raise 6 to to get 15, because 15 is between 6 and 36. So we have some idea of what we should get for an exponent. And now using our natural log, ln of 15 divided by ln of 6, will give us approximately what when we put that into our calculator. I'm getting 1.511. We round these exponents to three decimal places. And then if I use the, nat, uh, the common log, log base 10 of 15 over log of 6, and approximate using the calculator, again, I'm going to get 1.511. That power that's between 1 and 2, the power that I raise 6 to to get 15. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 3 and 5 through 9 on pages 507 through 509 of your textbook.